In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Show favour, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who scares for all men, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly, for your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you spare all. For you show your strength when men doubt the completeness of your power and rebuke any insolence among those who know it. You who are sovereign in strength judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us.
for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous man must be kind, and you have filled your sons with good hope because you give repentance for sins. The word of the Lord. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call. Give heed, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my voice. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving. All the nations shall come to adore you and glorify your name, O Lord. For you are great and do marvelous deeds, you who alone are God. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving. But you, God of mercy and compassion, slow to anger, O Lord, abounding in love and truth, turn and take pity on me. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord.
At that time, Jesus put another parable before the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed wheats among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then has it weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burnt but gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable he put before them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till it was all leavened. All this Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed means the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears Let him hear. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul confronts us in this morning's second reading with our weakness. To accept the gospel neither immunizes us from physical weakness, our vulnerability to illness and death, nor does it immediately free us from disordered desire for power over others or for the many things to which we are tempted at the expense of others even to the neglect of our own good. The politician is tempted to mouth the expected platitudes 
while awarding the contracts to the usual cronies. Not only that, but we are easily lulled into apathy. We let them get away with it. Our human weakness commonly takes the form of apathy, a reluctance to shoulder responsibility. Yet, though this may be cause for anger and dismay, it is not cause for despair. Why not? Well, because once we acknowledge our weakness, we can call on the help of the Spirit. St. Paul encourages the first Christians at Rome to recognize the power of the Holy Spirit, not least when they come to pray, when they do not know what they should rightly pray for. Though heart and mind may be clouded by the effects of sin, the Spirit can be relied upon to intercede for us. And what God asks for, God knows to be asked for rightly. And what God knows to be asked for rightly, God gives unstintingly. By virtue of our baptism in Christ, then, our prayer is put right, put for us, taken up into the eternal communication of love, of self-giving, shared by the persons of the Holy Trinity. When the Spirit intercedes for us, it is not necessarily nor primarily about speaking in tongues. It's about our reliance on God by our virtue of our adopted sonship, so that our desire for God is strengthened by his many gifts. Heart and mind are with time, by grace, to be reformed, remade in conformity with the mind of Christ. That's not a mental straitjacket, that's a liberation from our narrow-mindedness, a liberation from our apathy. Time, of course, is something we may begrudge. Our apathetic culture is, ironically, anxious for a quick fix. Yet this morning's gospel would repeatedly instill something of God's patience. There's the time of waiting for the harvest. Skirting the fields by the River Charwell last Sunday, I learnt about the so-called volunteers, stray plants that grow up uninvited in the middle of another crop. Easy to spot, but impossible to uproot without trampling down the harvest a problem similar, at least, to that in today's parable of the wheat and tares. The tiny mustard seed must have time to grow into the large shrub on which the birds can perch and feed. The yeast, the leaven, takes time to work. The dough must rise, be knocked back, and left to rise again before the bread is cooked in the oven. Why does this matter? What is the strength of God's patience here? Well, the two short parables sit inside a frame formed by the longer parable of the wheat and tares at the start of our reading and by its later explanation. And these two inner parables offer a possible answer. Both turn on a contrast between small origins and the expansive 
end result. God's patience then allows the seemingly insignificant to be seen in its fullest import, its final decisive significance. From the perspective of the here and now, the lure of wealth, security, power, prestige, or simply immediate pleasure may dominate our vision, set our priorities. But what will reveal itself as truly important from the perspective of God's judgment? What will matter when we are asked by the Lord himself how we cared for the hungry, the naked, and those in prison? Then we shall see the full significance of small acts of kindness, of simple honest prayers, of asking each day for the forgiveness we need and are in turn to offer others the full significance of our habitual going to Mass, of our acts of charity, and the full significance of our desiring to receive the Lord in Holy Communion. And we shall be truly thankful for the Spirit who has come to our help. Let us stand and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God. And so we bring our prayers before God our Father. We pray that our Bishop Bernard may follow God's will and seek the good of those he serves. Lord, in your mercy, that those entrusted with dispensing justice and interpreting the law may look to Christ as the source of wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, that we may wait for God's harvest time and not pass harsh judgment on others. Lord, in your mercy, that the aged in our community may be, may be sustained by our thoughtfulness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, for those who have died recently, and especially those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, in your mercy, we unite these prayers and those of our hearts with those of Mary, our mother, as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving Father, hear all these our prayers and what we ask in faith grant through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice 
brought to completion varied offerings of the law. Accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy, as you blessed the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our Holy Father, St. Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her unity and peace in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. (laughs) 